Aluminum is a very important metal in the metallurgical industry. It is the 13th element on the periodic table and the third most abundant element on the earth crust after oxygen and silicon. And it is the most abundant metal in the earth's crust. Now because of its um, peculiar properties like high tensile strength, low density, high thermal and electrical conductivities, high resistance to corrosion, it is very valuable in the metallurgical world industry. It is why it is used for making overhead cables, it is always for making pots and kettles or cooking utensils and its low density and high tensile strength is why it is used for making the bodies of aircraft coupled with its high resistance to corrosion. All right. From this electronic configuration, we can see that it is in the P block of the periodic table. It is a P block element and it belongs to group 3 and period 3. The main ore from which aluminum is obtained or is extracted is called bauxite. Bauxite is made up of alumina Al2O3 and ion 3 oxide Fe2O3. Alumina is an amphoteric oxide, which means that it reacts with both acid and alkalis, right? While ion 3 oxide is a basic oxide, which reacts with only acids and not with alkalis. Now, the processes involved in extraction of aluminum are two major processes. One is the purification of bauxite, which is also known as the Bayer process, and the second one is electrolysis of alumina, also called the Holt Herald's process. So, let's look at the Bayer process. The first step involved in the Bayer process is the digestion of bauxite in concentrated sodium hydroxide or in an alkali. Now, why do we need to do this? Because we want to separate the impurities, which is ion 3 oxide, from alumina, right? You know that alumina is a substance that contains aluminium from which it will be extracted through electrolysis. So, we need to obtain that alumina from the bauxite. And in order to do that, we have to separate it from ion 3 oxide. And for us to do that, we make use of an alkali. Remember, we said that alumina is an amphoteric oxide. Well, ion 3 oxide is what? It's a basic oxide, right? So, coming back here, we can see that we use an alkali to digest bauxite because the ion 3 oxide in the bauxite will not react with the alkali. It is only the alumina that will react with the alkali to form sodium aluminate 3. So, how would now get rid of the ion 3 oxide? Because it will not dissolve in the alumina. So, it will remain as what? Residue in the mixture. So, it will be filtered off and of course discarded if we don't have any use for it. So, after getting the sodium aluminate 3 solution, we then carry out the precipitation of aluminum hydroxide from the sodium aluminate 3 watt solution using what we call what the common ion effect. What does that mean? It means that we are using a common salt, a common ion of the salt in solution to reduce the solubility of that particular salt or the, or the solubility of that particular ion in the solution. Now, aluminum ion is in the solution in this sodium aluminate 3. So we want to reduce its solubility in this solution. We want it to come out of solution. So we add pure crystals of what? Aluminum hydroxide to it. So that's a common ion effect. So the pure crystals of the aluminum hydroxide will go and distort the equilibrium position. It will increase the concentration of the aluminum ion in what? In the solution. I to now shift the equilibrium position to the right, thereby precipitating what? Aluminium hydroxide, right? So, from here, we can then filter the aluminium hydroxide, wash it, and then dry it. So, after that, you then move on to the next step, which is the thermal decomposition of aluminium hydroxide in order to obtain uh, pure alumina. So, here we now heat the aluminium hydroxide is strongly heated to decompose into what? pure alumina 8L2O3 right now this pure alumina is what we will then use for the next process that is the electrolysis process we have completed the separation or the purification of the bauxite the Bayer process ends here so the next step which is the electrolysis of alumina begins the Holt-Heros word 
process. So electrolysis of molten alumina, that is the hot Herald's process. In this process, the electrodes used are carbon blocks, which make up the anode, and carbon linings, which is the cathode. Then the electrolyte is molten alumina mixed with what? Creolite, Na3AlF6. Why do you have to add creolite? The creolite is added to reduce the melting point of the alumina from about 2000 degrees Celsius to about 900 degrees Celsius. By doing that, it reduces what? The cost of uh, production via the energy cost of uh, electric, electrical energy that will be used in melting what? The alumina. So it also helps in making the process economically what? Viable, right? So when that happens, the molten alumina dissociates into aluminum ion and oxide ions. So all this will take place in the whole herald cell, right? Or the electrolytic cell. Now let's see how the whole herald cell looks like. This is a sketch of the cell, a cross section of the whole herald cell. That is the electrolytic cell used for the electrolysis of alumina. You can see these are the blocks of carbon which make up the anode. You can see they are hanging, right? Then the body of the cell is made up of what? Steel, right? And you can see the lining of carbon that make up what? The cathode. The cathode is negatively charged, right? While the anodes are what? Positively charged. Now this molten alumina plus the creolite, which is the electrolyte, fine. And you can see bubbles here around the anode. These bubbles are bubbles of oxygen gas that are being what? Liberated at the anode. And here you have molten aluminum that is being formed at the cathode as the process progresses, right? And the molten aluminum is tapped out at this word point. All right, let's see the reactions that occur at the electrodes. At the anode, the oxide ions undergo oxidation. Each oxide ion loses two electrons to form an oxygen atom. But remember, oxygen is a diatomic word molecule. So, mean that that reaction has to occur what, twice. So that's why we have what, 2 O2 minus, giving us, giving us what, O2 plus 4 electrons, right? While at the cathode, the aluminum ion undergoes reduction by gaining three electrons lost at the anode to form what? Aluminum metal, right? Which sinks to the bottom of the cell. But remember, electrolysis is an application of a redox reaction. And in redox reaction, which is a transfer of electrons, the number of electrons lost must always be equal to what? A number of electrons gained. Here, four electrons were lost, while only three electrons were gained. So what do we do? We multiply the anodic half equation by three and the cathodic half equation by four to balance what? The number of electrons transferred. So that gives us 6O2 minus to 3O2 gas and 12 electrons. At the cathode, we have 4Al3 plus plus 12 electrons, giving us 4 aluminum so this gives us the different half equations at the anode and the cathode all right so by so doing by so doing, we can see that the product at the anode is oxygen while the product at the cathode is aluminum right with this we have successfully carried out the extraction of aluminum from what bauxite but that's not all the process comes with its own what setbacks or disadvantages so let's see what those advantages are first is the depletion of the word of the anode which comes from where the reaction between the carbon blocks at the anode and the oxygen that is being produced at the anode so what happens at high temperature the oxygen produced at the anode reacts with the carbon anode right to form what carbon dioxide gas or carbon dioxide gas, which is what which is blown away as a greenhouse gas. So as this happens, it makes the anode to wear off, and over a period of time, those carbon blocks will need to be what replaced. I know that this is very very what expensive, right? The carbon dioxide that is produced at the anode that is being given off as a waste gas increases the amount of what greenhouse gases in the what atmosphere, 
and that leads to what an increase in what global warming so that's one of the disadvantages of this process it increases what global warming due to the production of carbon dioxide what gas as a waste gas and then generally because of the continuous or periodic replacement of the anode and the high cost of uh, electrical energy this process is very what expensive though new technologies are being introduced or adopted that will bring down the cost of the production of aluminium so that will be all for our class today so if you have to learn anything from this tutorial drop your comment hit the like buttons subscribe to this channel if this is your first time here and turn on your notification bell to always stay updated with our new uploads so until we come your way next time keep winning and stay blessed